One of the things that we looked at this week were the uh, regular polygons, and one of the things that we're interested in for regular polygons are how to calculate their internal angles. So by the internal angle, I mean, so for example, for this pentagon, we want to know what each of these internal angles are. Now probably the simplest method conceptually is to think of breaking the polygons up into smaller triangles. <clears throat> so if I break this pentagon into three triangles, I use the fact that the internal angles of um, a triangle, internal angles of a triangle, always sum to 180 degrees. <coughs> And I can use this um, to determine the total internal angles of any, any regular polygon. So <clears throat> we can see here each of these triangles must be 180 degrees. I just need to make sure that the way I've drawn the triangles in means that the angles of those three triangles span completely, or cover completely, the five angles of the pentagon. <clears throat> so you can see here that this angle of the pentagon here is made up of this angle, this angle, and this angle of those triangles. This angle of the pentagon here is exactly the same as this angle of the triangle. This angle of the pentagon here is this angle plus this angle. Then here we have this angle, this angle, and this one. So we can use that fact um, in order to calculate the total internal sum, and then because um, we're dealing with regular polygons, um, we can... <coughs> then just divide by the total number of angles. And so, <clears throat> one of the things we note is that we can always fit in the number of triangles for an n-sided polygon that we get is always two less than the number of sides. So you see for pentagons, there's three. If I had a regular hexagon like this, then I'm able to make four triangles by dividing it up this way. <clears throat> so if I had an example problem of a 17-sided shape, what I would be essentially doing is saying, okay, 17-sided shape, so I'll just draw that. Um, I'm just going to draw a rough sketch in by doing 17 dots around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then so this gives me my 17-sided polygon, rough sketch of, like this. <clears throat> and I want to say how many triangles can I break it into. And um, so I do this by going from one of the vertices here, like this, to every vertex of my 17-sided figure. And I can count them. I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I get 15 all up. But I didn't actually have to draw out this entire picture because I know from looking at all of the other polygons that the number of triangles is always two less than the number of sides. <coughs> but here I've got my 15 triangles, and so the total internal angles will be 15 times. 180 degrees for each triangle, and that gives me a value of 2,700. <clears throat> and then so each internal angle that I have for my shape is going to be a 17th of this, because I've got 2,700, and because all of the angles are equal, it's divided equally between those angles. So I have 2,700, and I'm dividing it by 17, and that gives me approximately 158.8282. And so this is my internal angle. Okay. Now, one extra thing that I'll just add is, you know, at the moment we take it for granted that triangles have 180 degrees um, as their internal angles. We can actually prove that, um, <clears throat> one of the ways that I like to think of it is if we consider two parallel lines and a line going 
So these are parallel. <coughs> and I consider um, a line going through these. So, like this. Now, necessarily, um, this angle and this angle have to add to 180 degrees. <coughs> and I can justify that by thinking, you know, if I was facing in this direction, I turn this much and I turn this much, so the amount that I actually turned here was equal to this angle here, which is the same as this angle. And then when I got to here, I turned around here, like this, and that angle is the same as this angle. And we can tell that just from, you know, the angle that this line makes has to be the same with this line as it does with this line. <coughs> um, and this angle here will be the same as this one, which then in turn will give us that one there. So that has to be 180 degrees all up. <clears throat> if I draw in a third line of a triangle, so say coming down here, um, what I find is that the amount that's taken off here, okay, so the amount that I reduce this angle by, by essentially rotating this line around here, necessarily has to be the same as the angle that's formed here. So from that, we get that you know, has to be 180 degrees inside um, every triangle. But, you know, we don't have to think about this each time. We can just take it for granted that triangles have 180 degrees. Okay, have a good weekend.